I wish that I had a help. I always have a lot to do before my children returns from school, that it gets overwhelming. And that is what amazes me about you. How are you able to handle your chores, work and still have the time to relax and visit your friends? I guess it's just how it is. Being a wife and a mother is a lot of work. It might be a lot of work, but not for me. Gone are the days when I'll stress myself for anyone. If my husband decides to make me work beyond my capacity, I'll leave. You mean leave the house? Where will you go? Besides, it won't change anything so why do it? Who's talking about leaving the house? I mean leave the marriage. My eyes are open now so that nobody can intimidate me. We're in a new era and deserve to be treated right just the way we want. This is not the olden days when women didn't have freedom. Now I get to do what I want, whenever I want it. Don't tell me that you're now part of those advocating for divorce at the slightest provocation. You can't have such mindset about your marriage and still expect it to be successful. If you're looking for the smallest excuse to leave, you'll find it in no time. Don't forget that, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. If you want to do yourself some good and preserve your life and beauty, then join me. Stress is a major cause of aging, and I don't want to look like I'm 60 years old at 38. I rebuke any spirit that would try to make me treat my marriage that way. That's your business. How are you doing? I'm fine. How was work today? It was good. Please get me food. I'm starving. Did you look at the time? How can you expect to still have food by now? It's too late already. I thought that you'd eat out. No, I didn't eat anywhere because I wanted to eat at home. Do I now have a timetable for feeding? Why didn't you keep some of the food you and the children ate for me? We went out to eat because I couldn't cook. I was too tired. You're gradually making this a habit, and I don't like it at all. Instead of feeding my children nice homemade meals, you're taking them from one eatery to another, where you don't trust the cooking process and hygiene. You'd better discontinue this habit, it doesn't speak well of you. What? So if I don't cook then I'm a terrible mother? If that is the case then so be it. What's most important is that they're not starved, homemade or not, food is food. Just stop it. That's all I have to say for now. It's Sunday, and everyone is dressed for church except you. What is happening? You can go with the children, I'll stay back and cook. If it's because of what I said the other night, I'm sorry. We can get something to eat when we return, so that you will take your time to cook. Please go and get ready, let's all go together. So now that I've decided to make a nice meal, it's a problem? Go to church and leave me alone, I'm a full-grown woman and can decide what I want. Fine, but keep it at the back of your mind that I'm not happy with your decision. What will your happiness do for me? Why do I have the feeling that you're trying to use every opportunity you get to instigate a fight between us? You said that you were all ready to go, right? You better leave now before you'd accuse me for your lateness. How's your family? We're doing okay. I've been worried since the last time you visited me because of what you said, so I came to ensure that everything is fine. Honestly, my husband keeps getting on my nerves. He complains about everything I do or any decisions I make. I don't know how much longer I can take the attitude he gives me. I warned you about this, whatever you seek, you'll find. You know that the purpose of the enemy which is Satan is to kill, to steal and to destroy. His major target is the home, because he knows that when the foundation is destroyed, the house will collapse. That is why he's busy sowing the seed of discord and misunderstandings in marriages, so that he'll have his way and waste the seed in such homes. Do not give him room for that in your life and family. You take everything too seriously, this has nothing to do with Satan, it's all about me. I've chosen to make a decision that will favor me for the sake of my mental health. It's been 15 years of continuous stress and trouble, when will it ever end? I can't continue to serve and cater for everyone else but myself. I am woke and wiser now. You are choosing the wrong path and I don't want that for you. Even if there's no other reason you should stay and build your home, for the sake of your children and their future, please stay. 
they need to grow in a loving and sane environment, and also feel the presence of both parents in their lives. They need you two to grow and become balanced Christians, and also have lovely homes. Any decision you make will affect them, please choose wisely. My children will grow up one day, and understand why I made whatever decision. There's nothing you'll say to me now that will make me change my mind. I deserve my baby girl treatment, if my husband won't give it to me, and rather choose to stress me, I'll leave without looking back. Why are you all dressed up? Where are you going? What do you mean by where am I going? Is today not Monday? Where do people go on Monday morning? <laughs> the last time I checked, you worked from home. So where are you going? I'm tired of working from home, so I applied and got another job. I'm resuming today. And all these while, you didn't inform me as your husband. And if I didn't ask, you would have left the house just like that. And so what? Can't I make a decision without your interference? I am your husband and deserve to know. Have you forgotten the agreement we made several years ago? I said that I'm tired of it. I don't want to work from home anymore. Is it so difficult for you to understand? You couldn't properly clean and take care of the home when you were around. How much more now? Do you think you can manage all that? So now you're calling me lazy, right? This is part of the reason I decided that I want to be leaving the house. You always assume that I do nothing all day. I have an office where I'll be going every morning, so don't expect much from me henceforth. This is not a good idea. We need to further discuss about it before you resume. Today is my first day at work, and I want to make a good impression. I'll see you when I get back. My wife's behavior keeps changing by the day. I hope I've done nothing wrong. Now that you're home, I think we should talk about your job. I had a long day at work, and need to rest. But this is the only time we can discuss this issue. There's nothing to discuss. I've made my decision and it's final. So what will happen to your business? It's an online business and I'm not giving it up. I'll continue everything else I've been doing. Or are you intimidated by my success? Why should I be intimidated by your success? We're one. And what's most important is that we're financially stable. I'm tired of this discussion and need to rest. Good night. Doctor, what happened to my daughter? Will she be all right? Yes, you don't need to panic. Your daughter will be fine. It's good that you brought her in on time. If you delayed any further, the situation would have escalated. She should never be left all alone, just in case a situation like this happens again. Okay, doctor. Thank you. I called your phone all day, but you didn't answer. May I know why? I'm not allowed to answer calls during office hours. And you couldn't find an opportunity to call back? What if it was an emergency? Spare me all these drama and go straight to the point. I'm sure there was no emergency. So why were you calling? Your daughter is currently in the hospital. Our neighbors tried to reach you when she was convulsing but you didn't answer, so they called me. If it wasn't for my quick response, things would have gotten out of hand. You know that our daughter sometimes needs medical attention, which was why we decided that you'll be working from home. If this is your way of suggesting that I quit my job, it's impossible. This is your child that we're talking about. Do you not care about her health? It's not an option for deliberation. You must quit your job. I can't risk leaving our daughter by herself. She needs someone to be with her often. After all, I make enough money to sustain this family. And you make enough from your business. What else are you looking for? That will never happen. I cannot quit because of you. This is your first time of visiting. I hope everything is fine at home. No, I have an issue that needs urgent attention, and I came to you because you're my wife's closest friend. I'm hoping that she'll listen to you since she has refused to listen to me. What is the problem? Some months ago, she got a job that required her going to the office, and she didn't initially inform me about it. Then a few weeks ago, our daughter had a seizure which could have led to permanent damage. Since then I've been telling her to quit the job so that she can be available to take care of our daughter in case of emergency, but she won't listen. I want you to help me convince her to quit, make her understand why it's important, for the sake of our child. Okay, 
I'll talk to her. Thank you. I wasn't happy when your husband came to my house, asking me to talk to you concerning the misunderstanding you're having at home. Why did you allow it to get to this? How was I supposed to know that he'd come running to you like a child? Don't speak of your husband that way, he's the head of your home. I don't care, he shouldn't have come to you for any reason. He didn't come to me because he wanted to gossip about you, he really needed help, so he figured that as your best friend, I'd be able to get you to change your mind. What crime did your husband commit that you've turned your back on him? Since I came to the realization of the ideal way a woman should be treated, I started to see all the wrong things my husband has been doing to me. And whenever I try to enforce my right, it becomes a problem for him. I told you from the beginning that you should stop listening to whomever is advising you, can't you see how it's destroying your family? Have you ever searched the scripture to find out what it says about these decisions you're making? The word of God should be a guide for your life and decisions, not what anyone else says. God should be the final and supreme authority in your life, that is the only way to get things right. If you follow the standard of the world, it'll only lead to destruction. Proverbs 4, 11-13 says, I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction, do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Are you done? Is that all you came to tell me? No, I'm not. I also want to plead with you, to quit your job for the sake of your daughter, and so that peace can reign in your home. I've heard you. Can I go now? Has it gotten to the extent of reporting me to my friend? Are you so weak that you can't even talk to me by yourself? I've been pleading with you for the past few weeks, and you've been ignoring. What else do you want me to do? So, have you decided to quit? Since you've vowed to be a nuisance to me, I've decided to leave. Leave to where? I'm done with this marriage. I want a divorce. Uh? What did you say? You heard me clearly. I don't want to stay married to you anymore. I'm tired. And I'll take my children with me. That will not happen. You can't take my children away from me. Please, stop this already. It all started as a joke. Now we're living separately and causing a division among our children. The past one week has revealed to me that I made the best decision of my life. I don't have anyone that will order me around anymore or make me do what I don't want to do. I should have done this a long time ago. So you're saying that you won't change your mind? I'll never. How's my son doing? He's doing fine without you. I don't appreciate you calling me out here to bother me with questions. Once this divorce is finalized, don't call me ever again, unless my daughter wants to speak to me. I can't believe that this is happening. My family is falling apart and there's nothing I can do about it. Who else will my wife listen to? I really need to stop her from making this grave mistake. It could affect my children's well-being and I don't want that for them. Mom, the pastor has been knocking. Should I open the door for him? Tell him that I'm not around. You've been avoiding him for several weeks now, why? Just do as I said, and stop asking questions. It's heartbreaking to know that your wife is intentionally avoiding me by ignoring my calls and claiming that she's not around. All my efforts to reach out to her has been in vain. It seems to me like her mind is made up and there's nothing else I can do about it. Tomorrow is the final day for signing the divorce papers. I really do not wish to do it, but she has left me no other options. Oh my god! What is this? What have you done to yourself? What is wrong with my appearance? I just wanted to look like my friends. I've been warning you to stay away from those so-called friends but you won't listen. Now look what they're turning you into. First thing tomorrow morning, you'll go to the salon and shave all that hair, I don't ever want to see it again. Also, remove all the jewelry on you, I'm confiscating them. For what? What makes you think that you have the right to decide what I wear or how I look? Have you forgotten that I'm your mother? 
You're not allowed to talk to me in that manner. You lie. I can talk to you however I want. After all, you used to do the same to Dad. What makes you an exception? I'll forgive you just once. Don't ever try this again. Where's the key? I wanted to leave but I discovered that the door was locked, and I can't find the key. You're not going anywhere today. It's too late already. When was the last time you read your books? Your performance has gone from bad to worse, and you don't seem to care. All you care about is taking my money to go out and drink with friends. Don't you know that you're too young to take alcohol? I'm not in the mood to answer questions right now, and I'm running out of patience. Hand over the key now before I do something drastic. How dare you? Are you threatening me? What can you do to me, your mother? I won't take such misbehavior from you. Now go to your room and sit. How was your night? Aren't you going to school today? I'm talking to you, answer me. Just take me to my father, I don't want to stay here anymore. Get ready for school, and never say that again. I'm not going anywhere, take me to my father and sister, I want to see them. I won't repeat myself again, get ready for school. Leave my room, I hate you. <laughs> Why is it so difficult to take me to my father? I'm sure he's still alive. I'll continue to rebel until you're fed up with me. I won't go to school anymore. Edward. Wow, you look all grown up and different. Who are you? You'll hardly remember me. You were little the last time I saw you. How's your mother? I don't know. You can call her on the phone to find out. What's the problem? You sound worried. I'm not in the mood to talk about it. Just leave me alone. Whatever might be bothering you, I want you to make it known to your loving and caring father who will not only listen to you, but give you comfort. He is able to give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that you might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. God invites you to cast your burden upon him because he cares for you. But God is in heaven, he doesn't understand the pain I feel inside. He knows and understands what you're passing through. He sent his only begotten son to dwell among us, and he took the form of man and died for our sins, nailing it all to the cross. Hebrews 4, 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus really cares about you and is willing to help you, but you must have a personal relationship with him. You'll begin by acknowledging him as your father and lord, and then you can make your requests known to him. I want to know him better and live for his glory. Please lead me. That is wonderful. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Where have you been? And why were you not in school today? I went out to clear my head, and on my way back, I met someone who engaged me in a very long conversation. You mean you disrespected me again after my warning? I'm sorry, it will not happen again. It better not. You look different, what happened? I realized that my intention for dressing that way wasn't good and it made me uncomfortable, so I decided to change it. And this is what you've always wanted, I don't wish to disobey you anymore. Can I sit with you? Oh yes, come sit. Mom. I want you to tell me what happened between you and my father. Did he do something wrong? Why did you leave? Back then, I thought he did everything wrong, because that is what I was told. I met a group of young married women who taught me certain things about their marriage. They talked about how nicely they were treated, and how they were in control of everything in their home. So I wanted that for myself. I became tired of going through the stress of catering for everyone else but myself. That was when your father and I started to have series of misunderstanding, which finally led to our divorce. I've come to understand that when we live without measuring our actions with the word of God, we end up with mistakes and regrets. That is why I've chosen to know God personally, 
and make him the Lord over my life. His word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I've been amazed by the changes that you have. It is because I gave my life to Christ, he brought a new meaning to my life, and now I want to live for him. I used to be a believer, but after I met some friends, I gradually drifted away from the truth. You can still return to God, he's merciful and is ready to welcome you back. 2 Corinthians 5, 18-21 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You see, God wants us to be reconciled to him irrespective of our mistakes. I want to reconcile with him. And I also want to get back with your father, but I don't know if he'll ever forgive me or accept me again. I was supposed to build my home, and not ruin it. It's okay mom, we all make mistakes. What's more important is that we acknowledge them and seek a better path. We will build our home again by the help of God. Lisa, check who's at the door. Okay. Mom? Lisa? I've missed you. This is a pleasant surprise. How's Edward? He is doing fine, and can't wait to see you again. Why are you here? Please forgive me. I've made a terrible mistake by destroying the beautiful family that God gave to us, and I regret it every day. Now, I'm ready to make amends. Can we get back together? I've prayed for you all every single day. I'm so delighted that this is finally happening. You're welcome home. Please go get my son. Yes, thank you Heavenly Father. Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, the wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Don't follow the world's standard that could lead to the destruction of the family. Let the word of God be your guide as you build your home. Please, subscribe to our channel. Also like and comment on this video. Thanks for watching. God bless you. See you in the next one.